Got another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist. So it's number five. If you're doing OCR A's, it's paper three. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So part A is a bit weird. It's about these things that aren't on the specification called thiols, but we've got all the information we need. So we're told that they're weak acids. So obviously it's that hydrogen there that's going to um, be donated. So the expression for the acid dissociation constant will look like this. Next part, we're told that thiols react with carboxylic acids to form thioesters. So just treat that as an alcohol effectively, but obviously it's not an OH group, it's an SH group. So we're using the OH group from the carboxylic acid, the hydrogen from the thiol group, making a water molecule, and obviously that's this here is going to be your thioester functional group. Part 3, the skeletal formula for 3-methylbutuene-1-thiol. So obviously the carbon 1 is the one with the thiol group 1 which makes that carbon number two. So there's your butyl two in, double bond starting at two going to three, methyl group on three. And the last part of A, we're told propane one three dithiol. So that's this thing here. I've put the SH groups pointing down. You'll see why in a second. So they react with carbonyl compounds in a condensation reaction. So we're gonna form, in this case, a water molecule with the two H's on the thiol groups and the O from the carbonyl group and we need to form a cyclic organic sulfur product. So if you think about it, if we're going to lose the two hydrogens and the oxygen, obviously that double bond's going to go, we can actually connect that carbon to that sulfur. So the sulfur's still just making its two bonds. Likewise here, the carbon's got its four bonds it needs, so it's got those two to those two methyl groups and the new bond to the sulfur. So that's going to generate this cyclic product here. I'll sort these ridiculously long bonds out now and, and create the equation. But you get the idea, hopefully. So in terms of an equation, I've done it as a skeletal formula. We get that there. Moving on to part B now. The first thing we want to do is identify all the functional groups in these six molecules. And then we'll take the question from there. Okay, so I'll quickly run through these. We've got alkene, and this is a tertiary alcohol group in B alkene and an aldehyde group in C, alkene and primary alcohol in D, we've just got a ketone functional group in E, we've just got a secondary alcohol group in F, and in G we've got alkene and ketone. Now with this sort of question you've got absolutely loads of ways to answer it, so I'm going to give you my answer. Um, so long as your observations are correct with the correct um, reagents and you obviously identify the functional groups correctly then you would get all of the marks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to add Tollens reagent to all six of the compounds. Now we've only got one aldehyde amongst these compounds which is compound C so compound C would give a silver mirror all of the rest wouldn't. So that's compound C identified the next thing I'm going to do is add bromine water to the remaining five. So hopefully you can appreciate that B, D and G will all decolorize the bromine because they've got the alkene functional group, whereas E and F won't. Okay, so at this point all we know is that we've got B, D and G are alkenes, whereas F and E aren't. So I'm going to work on F and E now. So I'm going to add 2,4-DNP to these two and obviously E will give a yellow-orange precipitate because it's got the ketone group or the carbonyl functional group, um, F won't. So we've now got E and F identified. So we just need to work through B, D and G now. So the next thing I'm going to do is add 2,4-DNP to these and you can see that G will give an orange precipitate because it's got this ketone group, carbonyl group, whereas B and D haven't. So they won't give any orange precipitate. So we're down to just B and D now to distinguish between. So you can see they've both got alcohol functional groups. The alcohol in B is a tertiary alcohol, whereas D's is a primary alcohol. So if we add acidified potassium dichromate to both of these, 
This one's going to oxidise, so D will oxidise, so you'll get that orange to green colour change. B can't be oxidised because it's a tertiary alcohol, and that's how we'd identify or distinguish between those two. So that's the way I've done it. Like I said at the start, there's loads of ways to do this one. So long as your reagents will identify the correct functional groups in the molecules and you get the correct observations, you'll be absolutely fine.